Hello. In my previous video, I showed you how you could use R integration with Power BI to unzip a file and then process that file. What I want to show you here is how you can now download that file. The next question I got, of course, was how can I go download a file that might be out there, download that file, then unzip it, and then process it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over here to data.gov. Data.gov has a lot of great information, a lot of great data sets. It looks like right now they have about 300 and 3,000 data sets out here. And so I'm going to go over here, find a zip file that we can use. And then once I find that zip file, I'm going to show you how we can connect to that zip file using R. And you're going to learn how to download, unzip, and then process that file here in the next 10 or so minutes. And so what I'm going to use for this example is a file out here called names by state. So I'll type that in, hit enter. We'll give this a moment to process here, 303,000, so it might take a moment. But what it's going to return is a link. One result will be returned, and then I'm going to click on that link. And then instead of manually downloading that zip file, right? If I manually download the zip file, then it's static. What I want to do is actually connect to that file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the names by state that's returned. You'll notice that this has all of the states, including the District of Columbia. So we're only going to actually extract one file, which is going to be for Florida. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, so I'm going to, I'm going to extract the names for Florida. And so if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see that it is, in fact, a zip file. I can click download or I can actually right click here and then say I want to copy the link address. And if I copy the link address, that's going to give me that URL. And now I can use that URL in my R script so I can make sure that anytime I do a data refresh, I get the most up to date information. And so I'm going to copy that link address. Now, fortunately, in advance, I already created the code and the demo to make this video much quicker. And so what we're going to do now is let's go ahead and flip over to our studio and take a look at the resulting code from this. All right, so we're in our studio and I'm going to walk you through the process here. The first thing that I'm doing is I'm going to create a variable called destination. And this is the destination where I'm going to actually download that file to. So this is going to go to my local drive. The next thing I'm going to do is identify a variable. And this is the variable where the zip file is currently located at. And so I have my destination and my source. And this is simply going to be the copy of that URL. Remember, we copied that link address. That's what I pasted in here already in advance. Uh, then I'm going to use this command right here, download.file. And download.file is going to take two parameters. The first parameter is the source. So where is the zip file at? The second, or any file really, so it doesn't have to be a zip file. You can download any file using this method. And the second parameter is where do you want to store that at? Now, there's also a way that you can actually download a file. You can download that in memory, and then you can just clear the memory afterwards. So you don't even have to download that actually to your machine, or it doesn't have to remain on your machine for any length of time. If you're curious uh, how to do that, just email me, send me a message, and I can send you the script on that as well. I wanted to keep this pretty simple. The, uh, the next step here, though, is once I've downloaded that file, we then need to unzip this file. Now, this part you saw in the previous video. I run a basic unzip command. I'm going to unzip the destination file. Right? That's where we put the file at. So it's looking at that name by state.zip file. I'm using that destination variable again. I'm going to unzip it. And then from that, I want to extract the florida.txt file. Now, remember, there's a lot of different states in here. That's just the one that I want. I'm going to take the results of that and store it in the Florida names variable. So now I have all of my names. I'm using a new variable or another variable here called baby names. I'm using a read.csv command to read that file. And then I'm using, uh, I'm just printing it. Essentially, I'm printing it in our studio so I can test this out. Now, unfortunately, there's a little bit of time to download this. This is a little bit of a bigger file, so I don't want to let this run for, for 20 seconds. But what I'll do is I'll go ahead and run it. And then while this is running, I'm actually going to jump back over to Power BI Desktop real quick and remind you where you can go in Power BI Desktop if you haven't done this or you missed my previous videos, where you can go in Power BI Desktop to take the code that we have here and then paste that in there. It looks like, uh, based on the amount that I'm talking, it's going to actually be done before we flip over, and it is. So remember that this final step right here, the final variable right here, we don't need that one for Power BI, right? We we don't need to print it because we're going to Power BI. Power BI is going to recognize all the variables that we've defined, and then we get to choose which one, you know, which data set we want to bring in. So I'm going to copy out all the code, but not that last variable right there. I'm going to Control C. And then if I go down here to the bottom, you'll see that we're getting a whole bunch of good information about baby names, the number of baby names, the year, the state, 
and then we can go down this list and there's tons and tons of good information. Now, because it's a large file, you'll see that it omitted 200,000 rows, right? So this is just showing us a sample of that data here, but we wanna bring all 200,000 and 694 rows, we wanna bring those into Power BI. So that's the next step. That's what I wanna show you next. So I'm gonna flip over to Power BI Desktop and from Power BI Desktop, I'm going to go up to Get Data. I'm gonna get data from More Options. And then if I go to Other, inside of Other, we have this option right here for R script. And so I'm gonna grab the R script, click Connect, and I'm just gonna copy that code that you were just looking at and paste it in this editor. Now, once again, if you've missed my previous videos, the reason that I write it and test it in our studio is because uh, this is just a text editor. Now, I'm sure that the Microsoft team is gonna update this soon. They update very quickly, but at this time, uh, it doesn't really do a whole lot for you. So you wanna make sure before you do anything that this code works. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK here. And this might take a little bit of time to establish a connection. So what'll happen is just like if you connect to an Excel file in Power BI or you connect to a, uh, a web page, you're going, or a SQL database, you're gonna get a navigator at the end. And the navigator is gonna say, here are all the data options that you can extract from that script or from that Excel file or from that SQL Server database. So we'll get a navigation pane here. And so we get a navigator, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually choose the last one there, which I believe was baby names. Remember, baby names, that variable had taken the data from Florida and extracted that out. And so when the R script editor went through all of the different variables, it actually decided here that the only one that had viable information for us in a tabular format was the baby names. And so that's what we get. And so now if we go down the list, you'll see that uh, we're getting all of the data. I click the checkbox and now I can load it or I can edit that directly into Power BI Desktop. That's it. That's all you have to do. So if you want to set it up in a way where you can actually download, unzip, and process a file using R integration with Power BI, that's how you do it. I will kind of give you one more point here that's very important. If you're going to schedule a data refresh, at the time of this recording, and I saw something on uh, Twitter the other day, it's building some momentum, so if you can, go out to the feedback forum, the user voice forum for Power BI and vote for this. At this time, if you want to do data refresh with R and you publish this to the service, you actually have to use the personal gateway. It's not supported in the Enterprise Data Gateway. And so a lot of people are building momentum on this and are voting on this to actually get that kind of um, built into the Enterprise Data Gateway where we can schedule the data refresh using the, the Enterprise Data Gateway instead of the Personal Gateway, which is huge because other than R, in my opinion, there's really no reason to use that gateway. So now this kind of brings that back into play, but it is something that you need to know. At the time of this recording, if you want to schedule the data refresh, you need to install that Personal Gateway and uh, you need to use that in order to do the data refresh. All right, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.